And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is around 4.45 p.m. We are coming in to the last 15 minutes before the day closes. And I think that is a good time to kind of take a look at the daily time frame here. And momentum will cross down here. Uh, from, or sorry, below 34,571. So where are we at right now? We're currently going to cross momentum back to the downside. And <clears throat> essentially tomorrow, if we do close anywhere below 34,000 bucks, I will look at this as a bit of a lower high and well, uh, some, bearish divergence, which is going to be printed. So would you call it a lower high or a higher high? Uh, it's close enough to me as this got up to an 87 read and rejected. And uh, that should give you at least one drive, uh, a move down to the 21 at 33.401. And we have kind of been holding along to the, and here's the other thing, uh, daily volatility is now declining. And you've got uh, lower volume coming in today on Binance, on BitGet, on Coinbase, all putting in a pretty, pretty much a sell signal. This is another sell signal on the jewel here, not quite confirmed. This ADX needs to turn red. Um, so with waning momentum here, short-term pullback or at least consolidation could be likely. Um, but what do we have coming up on November 1st? We have the rate hike decision. So just going to pull out that uh, good old CME rate hike tool. And um, again, I believe it's unchanged where um, there is now a 95% chance of no hike. No hike and a 5% chance of a, um, a, a cut, which I don't think they're gonna cut. Um, if I was Jerome Powell, I would probably be thinking about more of a bit of a hawkish tone as all the inflation numbers have been coming out higher than expected. So that with that caveat, I would say, you know, if they do cut, Bitcoin is gonna head up to the, uh, higher level of liquidations coming in at 35,200 and the next level up at 37.4. Do I think it'll stop there? No, I think that overall target of about 40, 40,000 will get hit. If we do clear this top side of this channel and make a higher low then you know, 40,000 in the cards. However, um, with open interest coming down, what is this? This is all the levered positions on the market. Uh, it's still at a relatively uh, high level across the board if you look at all the open interest, but um, three billion on three point eight billion on Binance is very small. Um, what are funding rates doing here? Funding rates are slightly positive, so not point not. 1%, is that correct? No, not 0.1% is the, the sell zone, so to speak, up here. Even that was not, uh, that was not quite there at the not 0.1%, that was at not 0.03%. So as funding rates go up, it costs you more to go long. As they go negative, it costs you more to go short. And so open interest is relatively low, suggesting more consolidation. Liquidation levels coming in at uh, 35, right around that 35.4 region. The last major one at 300 million did send the Bitcoin price down from 34.7 down to 34.180. And I do believe that happened uh, earlier today. Or was it yesterday? It was, it's Halloween some places and it is still, 
And according to the charts, in 15 minutes, it will be ha Halloween because the daily is going to close and the 34, 31st price action will start back up. So what else is interesting on the board here? I don't know. Let's drop it down to the lower term time frame. So to me, the daily looks like a little bit more consolidation in the range. Um, if not, like it's ready to do the pullback that we've been talking about somewhere around 31 six uh somewhere around this 21 uh the 21 exponential moving average so all kind of depends and it looks like momentum is going to flip back down to the downside we are currently sitting at uh, well slightly above slightly above slightly below 34 446 is the pivot i don't think it's going to cross down i think it's going to surprise everybody and give one more try to the upside and that's what i've noticed in these Kind of pop up moves um typically they do give like one more fairly decent try and what would be decent in bitcoin land right now um what takes us up to that 35.3 that's about three percent so that's the typical move uh that you see when bitcoin does pop up um you know you get a three percent move in a day and that's like a pretty decent sized move um, in either direction. 3% to the downside would bring us right back down to the 21. So pretty unclear on the daily time frame. The four hour, uh, I imagine most people are looking at this as a bit of a ascending triangle. That's where the price action is making higher lows. And I'm giving you guys this live with no notes. So um, that this is exactly what I'm looking for at the end of the day. How is price action going to react? Did we get a trap move uh, this morning on the 15 minute? You could call this the the trap. Um, definitely got some people trapped up here at 34 eight. Uh, going long, put in a bit of an M, completed the M, made a slightly lower low, but then we reclaimed the purple 200 and, you know, kind of trucking along here, trucking, trucking along here. And I do believe this uh, triangle is going to get resolved here in the next day or two. And like I said, if Powell just keeps rates the same, I think the market goes higher. If he does a rate cut, I think markets go much, much higher. On the other hand, if he comes out and he's hawkish and, you know, surprises people and the unexpected happens and we do get a rate hike, which I don't know why they wouldn't, honestly, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, if they want to bring inflation down, they got to hike rates, but then they can't pay the debt. So again, Fed pal caught in the rock on rock in a hard place. So four hour time frame. Do we have any bearish divergence? Let's check out that RSI and take a look here. It looks more like bullish divergence to me. Hidden bullish divergence as price is making higher lows. One, two, three. But we already got the shot to the top side of the range. So you could say it has played out. So uh, nothing there. Momentum is to the downside on the four hour and the jewel uh, getting a bit of a sell signal here should turn red um, and that would confirm it. I'd say any kind of a closure back below 34,000 likely takes us back to the bottom side of the range. And there really isn't a whole lot of bearish divergence. Um, you know, could you call that slightly uh, some some divergent? I'd say it's close enough. Close enough is close enough. But those are higher highs. So, no, that, that would not count. Um, that would not count. So, again, you know, one more try to the upside, I think, is the more likely case. I think the bulls are flying strong. The bulls are in control right now. But is it worth it for 3% more uh, to get, you know, to get that last 3% squeeze on the daily volatility? I would say overall, based on how the weekly closed, a uh, very strong weekly closure uh, back above this pivot at 34,000, running into some sell pressure at this last lower high would not be unforeseen. 
But uh, overall, uh, based on the weekly closure and volatility expanding, I think a 50% move to the upside would not be uncalled for. And 50% does take you up to where? 40,000 bucks. So that was what I said at the beginning of the video. And if we do get up there, um, again, so how would that look on the shorter term time frame? So what you'd want to see, remember the four hour has been consolidating all weekend long. So if you feel like you missed the move and now you don't know what to do, well, you can wait for a confirmation, which would be a break above this area. Maybe we tagged this pivot at 36.3, put in a higher low and Boom, that would be your entry. Now, vice versa on the other side. If you're thinking, hey, I might want to go short on the market, well, then you patiently wait uh, for a break of the green 55, retest, and then you're targeting that purple 200. Um, that's how I would be playing it uh, right now on the Bitcoin side. Let's take a look at Ethereum which remember Bitcoin dominance has been, has been ticking up, but now it's ticking down, giving the altcoins room to breathe. The altcoins have started to really light themselves up here and tether dominance is breaking down. So again, all bullish for altcoins. Additionally, the ETH Bitcoin chart is uh, amidst putting in a bit of a W formation. And this one does look like it wants to get sent up to that green 55. I will show you um, a couple altcoins that I am looking at that are on the radar here. One uh, is this one, Big Time. Why it's been big time in it. This is in the gaming sector. Big Time has uh, certainly stood out in a very nice fashion over the last few weeks. Um, well, to the downside over the last few weeks, but overall, if we go to coin market cap, let's summarize or take a look at Bitcoin, big time really quick. What is big time? Before you reading, did you, did you miss the PP? No worries. Click here. I, I think that is, uh, that is some fake news about big time. It's a multiplayer action RPG for PCs that, melds a fast combat system with an open game economy where players have an active role in generating and exchanging game items. So it sounds like World of Warcraft or one of those games where you shoot, you know, Call of Duty uh, with crypto involved. Um, why is it kind of notable? I think the market cap here at 33 million Definitely interesting. And notice uh, 83 million being the daily volume. The circulating supply is 176 million tokens. So this one is just, just off the ground, fresh off the beat, and it is available on Coinbase. So just something I'm watching and I was watching over the weekend. Uh, did take a little nibble on this one after this uh, W formation um, did pop up here. So what what does a W look like? Well, you get a low, a lower high, a higher low on a candle body closing basis. And where does the W take you back up to? call it 25 cents. Um, so could be in in the cards for, uh, let's see it on the weekly that nope, that was the daily I, I was looking at here. So nice daily uh, play. And uh, I wish I would have bought more. But hey, these these kind of tokens are at your own risk, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but something to keep on your radar. So the daily did close for Bitcoin. And Big indecision candle as momentum is continuing to decline. So I don't think the push is going to be much more before we had a, we need, before we get a little pullback to grab some more liquidity, you know, maybe test all the way down to, um, you know, 29,030 bucks. Scare everybody one more time. And I think it's a good time to check out um, the 
good old recess center, resource center on Bitcoin Advisors where you can get a lot of cool stuff. But the market psychology um, here, where do you guys think we're at? Um, Perhaps in the disbelief phase, right? The disbelief phase after you know, bottoming out. The, uh, I'm, I think if you look at the chart, you know, looks pretty similar, right? If you overlay that on Bitcoin on, let's say, a weekly time frame. <clears throat> and now, after capitulating, popping our heads back up, and everybody's talking about the stock market crash, you know, the, the housing market crash, the bond market blow up. I, I tend to believe, look, if, if, you know, stock market doesn't pick itself up by its bootstraps here and make a new all time high uh, this year, it may put the kibosh on the Bitcoin rally. But statistically speaking, if October closes green, which I'm willing to bet that happens because we're closing here tomorrow, it'll be Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hope you enjoy it with your family. Definitely took my uh, daughter out for good old trunk or treat yesterday. She loved it. And she, uh, she at the end of the thing says, All right, can we do this again next year? I'm like, yeah, of course we can. Um, but needless to say, that's something to be aware of. The cone is still intact for Mr. Ethereum. Volatility is declining. Momentum is to the upside on the weekly from a low level. The daily is also declining here. And as you know, the Bitcoin dominance is kind of coming down and Ethereum has been a bit of a laggard. Well, you would suspect that perhaps, perhaps maybe we did break the cone. Maybe we did break the cone, but I I do think that um, Ethereum has a chance to be more bullish than Bitcoin at this point. Um, Don't ask me why, but just in general, because the rally has been so weak in comparison to Bitcoin. Well, off the low, what do we get? I call that weak 21% off the low so far uh, for Bitcoin 35%. So, um, and you can see this pivot is being held on the market right here at 34,529. If we can't get back above there tomorrow, well, uh, it might be see you later, sayonara, for the short-term move back to the downside of the range at 32.5. 32.5, if you ask me, is definitely in the cards there. And yeah, the RSI and everything on the four hours kind of just hanging out in the middle of the range. Let's see here. Momentum is crossed up on the four hour for Ethereum. And if I had to guess, this one does have a bit more of the, let's see, Asia market open, false move for the week beginning. So do we get a week of cooling off here as we open up November? Wouldn't say that's out of the cards. Uh, for Bitcoin or Ethereum as things are moving along pretty steady here, pretty steady on the monthly time frame. The monthly is going to put in a massive higher low, which is very good. We got the higher high, the higher low. Could you call that a higher high? Uh, I, I don't know if I would call that a higher high, but Bitcoin, that one you you could get away with it. Trend reversal on the monthly time frame. And uh, yeah, do we get a little bit more of a push? We certainly have lower volume there. Uh, that looks a little bit better on Binance as volume is picking up and we're putting in a nice little green candle there. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to bring up here is a couple of those altcoins and the Solana buy the rumor, sell the news. Yes. The Solana Breakpoint event out there in Amsterdam is going on right now. October 30th was the first day. Traditionally, this is a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. Uh, Solana did have a nice little pump last night. So was that the last pump? I mean, again, a lot of these coins are kind of hanging on the edge. Hanging on the edge. 
And uh, let's just curious, how much are tickets? How much are those tickets? Full access with USD. A thousand bucks for general admission late bird and thirteen hundred for the sponsor crew. Interesting. So almost as much as Bitcoin Miami, not quite as much. Um, but again, this liquidity hanging out here at 34.3. If we can clear above that, make a higher low, that'll be your sign that I, I think 40,000 is in the cards. But if we do get a bit of a rejection there, I'm curious to see what does Solana say? Because I know a lot of liquidity is building up there um, right above where we are at right now. Solana. <clears throat> so took out that liquidity, got a bit more ahead of us on the soul chart here up at 35 bucks. If you had to guess, if I had to guess, um, Solana takes one more push to the upside. One more push alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum. To me, I think Ethereum looks a little bit more undervalued as it is still the digital silver of, I mean, the, you know, it's it's the number one DeFi application out there. Um, and then I will bring up this one called Radiant, Radiant RDNT. Um, so Optimism has like a giveaway going out. These guys just applied for it, and uh, it looks like they're going to get forty million dollars worth of uh, forty. Uh, don't quote me on this, but it's some large amount of optimism tokens that they're going to be able to use to promote their brand and get more people to come in there and use their product. Um, also, about to make or did make a higher low on the weekly time frame, and it looks very similar to the big time chart and uh, this one, you know, you could target a move back to about 32 cents as long as, uh, well, the trend continues to the upside on the daily. Um, the daily momentum is still to the upside, so it might run out of steam here, but any kind of a daily back above 26 cents and I'd, I'd be looking for that 32, 33 bucks area to get hit. Uh, the other one, uh, that I also, uh, if you, and by the way, if you guys want this coin, you can get it on Mexi. I have to say, I, I heard about it from, uh, the lady named Annie love her show. Um, but definitely, definitely put in a bit, uh, and you can check her out on crypto banter. That's where I heard about it. Um, a nice W formation, uh, breaking a long-term trend after this one has, you know, done, ha had a pretty significant run this year. The liquidity is extremely low. So up 2000% this year, um, up, ex <laughs> sorry, the liquidity is very, very low. So it's like a micro cap. Um, you're going to have a hard time, you know, putting four or five grand into this coin. Um, well, not hard time, but um, <clears throat> just know that it, it may not be easy to get out. But this is typically the higher low formation you want to you want to take a look at. Um, I would say you could target a move, you know, maybe back down to this trend line one more time. Um, but this could get a nice leg up to about 50 cents from where we're at today. Uh, based on that W formation. So uh, the four hour W formation, boom, boom, higher low. And we took out the middle wick here and now we have officially made that uh, higher low. So uh, that's my two cents on that one. And compound is trucking along here on the four hour time frame. Again, this is a decentralized lender, a competitor to Aave. Ave has already like majorly broken out. Whoops. Um, and this one compound with a smaller market cap 
typically follows Ave. Um, I've seen it happen, you know, a bunch of times. And uh, now it has officially broken that green 55 on the weekly time frame. Well, Ave has. Ave's broken it and taken out the July highs while Compound has uh, not even touched the July highs and it has is basically on its way up to that green 55. Um, you probably want to judge it from there, but I would be targeting a move at least up in that direction for Mr. Compound and perhaps even higher at 77 cents or $77. And if this is the bull market, well, um, overall, I, I could see this one just making new all-time highs. That is it for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, share it with a friend. And remember, <clears throat> if you think you're too late for Solana, well, buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news almost every time. And just curious here for Solana, if we take a look at what's happened to Solana in the month of October, going back to the oldest Solana chart I can find. It's not going to be Coinbase. It will probably be uh, Bitfinex. Bitfinex. Yep, that's probably it. Sol Dollar. Sol Dollar? Nope. Let's see. What happened last October here? Uh, excuse me. It would be November, the month you'd want to look at. Okay, so what happened? Last November, September, October, November. So pretty red month. And did we have one in 2022? Oh, yeah. Pretty red month. But the month is December. So we topped out. So a little bit of both ways. Uh, and that was the top of the market. So, And I think things have changed. And to me, this looks like it does want to head up to about 40 bucks on the monthly if we do close anywhere here or higher. For the month, especially taking out that wick. If we get a sharp rejection over the next couple of days, that'll be your sign. Well, maybe a short-term pullback. But overall, that looks pretty bullish on the monthly. Uh, just look at this thing. This is what happened uh, last night. Last night, Solana took a 8% move uh, going into the event. Let's see how it goes coming out of the event. After a nice consolidation like that, though, it does look like it could have some legs. So uh, just something to be aware of with Solana. And lastly, our chain links. Uh, chain links has had a bit of a nice consolidation, nice trap wick right there this morning. And um, even though this one is getting a bit extended as well, um, you could see this one pump pretty good. Pretty darn good uh, to the upside. If Solana is going to remain bullish to me, Look at that candle. I mean, that was the day. The day. Okay, this is a good example of what you could. This is what Bitcoin's price looks like right now. Right? So consolidation, right? We made this higher low. We got an indecision candle. Solana had an event, so it pumped one last time. As volatility is declining and uh, you're getting that jewel sell signal. Well, this, this is flipping to a buy, but. If this does curl back around and turn blue, uh, dark blue, that's a perfect sell. And this turns red. The green line turns red. Well, it may be dump time for Mr. Solana back down to that uh, green 55 or somewhere around 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. Is what I do suspect could happen. Some people may be taking some profits here um, soon. Uh, on the four hour as well, back below 34.13. 34.13 is going to be well down quite a bit from here. 34 bucks. So back down, down below the nine here, and 
on the four hour, it's gonna, it, it, it may, it may officially um, send it to the downside. All right, that's enough rambling for me today. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day. I will check back in with you tomorrow. Take care.